There's really no safe rock out there that you can trust. You just have to hit it knowing that there's a possibility it's gonna slide. That's what's really gonna set this race apart from the others. Anything can happen out there when you're riding on rocks. They move, they roll around, like, they're bad. This course is relentless and you're gonna have to play it smart and ride smooth as you can to get through the day. You're constantly gonna be fighting the rocks because the bike's gonna be shifting on the rocks ways that you can't really predict. It's almost like they're throwing bowling balls at you, so you kinda always gotta be on your toes and make sure that you're really watching what's happening in the head. The AMA IRC US Hard Enduro Series presented by Inside Enduro goes out with a bang at round eight, the locked and loaded shotgun Enduro. I'm not even really thinking about the seven in a row, to be honest. It's more just, I just don't want to lose and give up an edge. I just want to go out um, the way I came in, I guess, winning. At the final round, riders are focused on putting everything they have left out on the course. I think the biggest thing for Tristan is being under pressure. If he is under pressure, I don't think anybody can stand a chance against him. I don't think there's anyone more focused than Roger. He's just totally involved in everything he does. Tristan takes all the negative that people say and just takes it to the podium. Like he just wants to show people that he's the best. Tristan is still on fire, unbeaten at this point, and he's gonna be a tough one to beat. He just wants to prove everybody wrong. I think he's out here to win. He shows up to win and he trains to win. You just really have to believe that you can do it. Like I know I can do it but it's just believing that you can do it. I mean, it's the last chance, so just gotta go for it. Is believing in himself going to be enough for Ryder to pull the trigger for a win? Ryder's gunning to win this race, I think probably more than any other race, because this is his home state, and it's the last race of the series, and he hasn't won one yet. Honestly, seeing him that hungry, it kind of makes me mad, so just hearing some of the stuff he says, that's it's good for me, because it fires me up, so. Keep it coming. At the first year of this new hard enduro event, no one is familiar yet with the race or terrain. Riders must adapt and expect the unexpected. The goal here, I mean, I want to land top five for sure. I'd love to land a podium. Now with Pat Smaji in the game, it's even tougher to do. Colton isn't here, but it's still going to be tough to get top five, so that's what I'm going to shoot for. I don't have many expectations coming into this race. I'm just going to try to finish and do the best I can. Pat's a pretty special rider. If he could dig deep that last hour, I think I'd be getting scared of that guy. My goal for this weekend is to be on the podium. I've been shooting for that all year, so I'm hoping that this is my race. The fight for first won't be the only battle we see this weekend, with some mid-pack contenders gunning for a taste of the podium as the season comes to a close. I'm not letting them beat me this weekend. That's all there is to it. This Pennsylvania landscape is full of unknown variables with new territory and new challenges. This weekend here at Sugarloaf, we have two prologues, 10 miles each. So that means we got to push hard on Saturday to get a good spot to get in the top row on Sunday. Format this weekend, it could be three laps, 11 miles, it's gonna be brutal out there. If we're doing really good and riding fast, we'll be doing four laps for a pretty grueling race.
So it's important to go out and scout your lines and you want to avoid as many tough situations as possible. That way when you get there you can just, you already know where to go. You don't have to second guess yourself. You got your line, that's hopefully the easiest one and you can just race ahead from there. Walk the first, ah, uh, you know, mile or two. Bunch of rocks, nothing too hard yet. It's not gonna get stuck in them, but they are gonna beat you down. I think it's gonna be a long race. Really, the walking is the most important on the hard spots because the super tough spots is where you make the most of your time. Stay on top, stay in the holes. You go in the holes, you waste energy because you're stuck. And if you're small like me, it's tough to pick up a 200 pound dirt bike out of a hole. There's one called Tombstone out here that's just these massive rocks going up a hill and that's, I think, where this race might be decided ultimately. So there's a couple of sections out there that just have big slab rocks that they flip up and right in front of you, like when your front wheel hits it and it's gonna get kicked under your skid plate and it's gonna screw you all up. Right here, over that. That might be the line. I think this will be some carnage tomorrow. until the first line goes off for race number one here on Saturday. The boys are lined up and ready to go. Let's see what they got. Wave one of the pros heads into the Enduro Cross course with Tristan Hart already in the lead. Spencer Wilton doubles the logs and attempts to shoot the gap. Pat Smodgy tails Spencer Wilton through the rocks, but Spencer holds his ground in third. Tristan makes a wrong turn, and Ryder is quick to act and takes the lead. Wow, check it out. Ryder put a pass on Tristan for the lead in prologue number one. Pat Smodgy has also put a pass on Spencer for third. Pat Smodgy in third. He's actually made up ground on both of those guys. Okay, here comes your leader, Ryder LeBlanc. Tristan Hart close behind. Smodgy running a strong third to the first prologue of the race. Coming off a strong podium at Flag like Roar. Pat's carrying his momentum right into this next round in Pennsylvania. Spencer Wilton in a close four. Follow him for a second. Ryder holds first as the leaders come in for a second lap. Tristan has a setback in the Enduro Cross course, uncharacteristic of the robot, which Ryder uses to widen his lead. We have some serious last lap battles on the prologue. Logan Ballyhue, Keith Curtis, and Wally Palmer, the wild card. Gapped out Tristan Hart a little bit. And he's gonna try to bring this thing to the finish in first place. Tristan Hart was within seconds of Ryder, but by the end of lap two, was unable to regain the lead. Our top guys are lined up, battle ready for the second round of day one. The cumulative score for both of these races counts for their start position tomorrow, so it is important. These guys are ready to put on the line. Let's see what they got. Two seconds. J. 
James Flynn and Jackson Davis shoot ahead, but both crash on the inside corner. Tristan picks the most efficient line in the logs and assumes first. Pat Smaji goes in for the pass, but Tristan edges him out. Tristan Hart, smooth, calm, and collected, right on through. Ryder, in an attempt to catch Tristan, takes an outside line, but gets blocked by Pat. Tristan is setting a commanding pace, but Pat is keeping up. Go for it. It's relentless out there, like never ending rock section. Like you're just holding on, arms are getting tired, pumped up, like from the first lab. It's gonna be a long day, I think. And then the heat's not gonna help either. Some of this stuff, when the rocks are moving, you can't really rely on traction or any safe spots. Ryder finally passes Pat, one step closer to Tristan, as they come in for a second lap. It's definitely really cool and surprising to be in the mix with these guys that are focused on it 100%. So I'm just happy that I am making some gains and, and mixing it up with the, some of the best riders in the world. Pat Fozzi back in that third position on the second race. He's going to secure his spot on the front row for the main race tomorrow where it really counts. Ryder keeps trying to pass Tristan, but is blocked by some lappers in the tight trees. In the final moments, Tristan turns it up, dusting out Ryder. They come into the finish just one second apart, but this time with Tristan in the lead. While we turn to our pros for a good battle, the core of Hardenduro is our amateur classes, where we see true testaments of teamwork and perseverance towards a common goal. I've got to strike this core with the humble hearts. Bearing heavy chains and blue collar scars. And mm -hmm. never to bleed, they're gonna get the way. If it don't take that fight, take it to the grave.
of our rear youth riders, Tanner Guthridge. He's had his fair share of troubles on this lap. It looks like he fell in some mud holes, but the persistence this kid is showing is awesome. He's slipping and sliding. He can't hold on to the bike, and he's just continuing on. Riley is our B class West Coast champion. He is Colorado and he is out front leading. He's looking very smooth towards the end of the prologue. The last chance qualifier starts after a torrential downpour saturating the course and only making it harder to qualify for the main. Wave after wave of amateurs pile into the Enduro Cross course, adding to the chaos. Celebrating the youngest riders making it through these tough obstacles is what brings everyone together at these hard Enduro events. The pros' hard work and dedication all season culminates in this final battle. They line up at the final round to show what they can do. find out which riders are prepared to push past their breaking point and who will succumb to the high temperatures and humidity. Ten seconds! doesn't start. Will this be Ryder's chance to tip the scales in his favor? Ryder leads through the Enduro Cross course, while Tristan passes Logan and Keith to make up for his late start. Spencer Wilton in the second wave of pros is looking for a clean race. To an early lead, the young rider LeBlanc looking to make his mark. Gets to the Enduro Cross track clean. Tristan Hart in a close second. Keith Curtis, the mountain man from Montana. Pat Smaji, the ultimate trials guy. And Logan Ballsview. Shelby Turner leads the pro women through the Enduro Cross course. Morgan pushes through the pack of amateurs with a little help along the way. Boys are still tight, coming into this first rocky, slippery section. Tristan Hart, Pat Smoggy working his way right back into that top three position. It doesn't take Tristan long to reassume the lead. Tristan Hart's working his way past Ryder LeBlanc. Neck and neck to 
sounds like the prologue in every other race this year. Good. I think my goal for this round is the same as it's been all year. I'm gonna beat Tristan. It's my last chance. Biggest challenge of this race is the loose cobble and loose rock. So you're like riding up it and it just like almost falls apart and slips down the mountain. And it's relentless rock. I mean, never ending rock, rock, rock. Okay, our leaders are here at Mossy Oak. The moss on top of the rocks is now wet and rubbery, making it challenging to get grip on these rocks. But Tristan Hart doesn't seem to be struggling at all. Right on LeBlanc, not far behind. Tristan so patiently working his way up this hill, like the professional and the champion that he is. Uh -huh. Tristan just got to the top of the hill and then looked back at Ryder to check in to say, I'm breaking you and this is where it starts. Ryder gets hung up early towards the top of Mossy Oak. Now he's gonna have to dig himself out of a bad line and work his way to the top. Meanwhile, Tristan's out front, stretching out his lead. Pat Smaji making an abrupt entrance. He works his way right up into the section, taking his time at the bottom, and he nails it to the midway point. Now he's behind Ryder. He's gonna either have to go around him or wait for Ryder to get up the good line. Pat does some fancy work and gets by Ryder. Ryder is determined not to lose any positions. They jockey back and forth, challenged by navigating the course in the tight trees. The relentless rocks are proving to be a challenge today for all the pros. Each additional impact with the rocks could result in mechanical failure. You kind of always got to be thinking. You can kind of never kick back and relax on the trail. You always have to be on it. still on fire, unbeaten at this point, and just dialed. So, I mean, as long as Tristan has a nice, smooth, steady race, he's gonna be a tough one to beat. He walks and works his way up. He waits the foot pegs. He's only dancing one foot peg to the other, working that bike so much, he tries to keep it rolling. Ryder LeBlanc working his way into the elevator, searching a little more than Tristan was searching for traction, trying to find the sweet spot, trying to what's working, what's not. Spinning and struggling a little bit, but still in second place. It's just never ending rock guard. You'll be just like pumped up. You're not gonna be able to hold on. You'll be getting kicked off the bike probably a couple of times. Hopefully not, but anything can happen out there when you're riding on rocks. I feel like some race I come in and think I'm prepared, but like physically I am, but mentally sometimes you just like break down and your body doesn't know what to do. Your mind doesn't know what to do. And almost like, freak out in your own mind like just for a little bit and that can cost you a whole race. Holy crap. How can I get so much energy? What are you doing? Stop. Stop. Pat Smaji coming into the picture here. Using his trial skills to navigate his way through these mossy, slippery rocks. 
And once the first two guys go over these rocks, they get worse and worse, they get polished and more slick. So it's gonna be harder for these guys. Oh. Pat catching a quick breather after a big push, finding some traction. They're most of the way up this elevator here. I'm definitely now more worried about what I can do just physically. I know I need to pace myself to get through these longer races, and it was very physical. So I just go by feel and hopefully keep it moving enough to finish. Following a guy like Pat is great for Keith because he can watch his lines and learn how Pat's finding traction. Keith Kerr is the mountain man, no stranger to hard work. The guy's not afraid to burn it in. He's got fitness like crazy, he's gonna keep breaking them down. Logan Balls, you getting his way towards the top of the elevator. Logan is an accomplished trials rider looking to make his mark in the hard enduro scene. About a quarter of the way through the race here. Tristan Hart has extended his lead already. This is Rattlesnake here. It works its way all the way up this mountain. It just keeps getting gnarlier and gnarlier. And this is when the race starts to drag you into deep water. Keith has worked his way by Ryder and Pat Smaji and is just working his way up these rocky sections out of sheer will and determination. Ryder LeBlanc running a strong third, working his way through these mossy, slippery rocks. Something tells me that a tire setup might be a little stiff or a little too something for this terrain. I think there ain't free contraction anywhere. At this point in the race, this is when it gets really hard to keep your composure. Keeping your composure is so important, and once you start getting frustrated and irritated and panic, then you stall downhill from there. So if you can keep your composure in the first place, it's a hell of a lot easier than getting it back. Pat may be our most technically proficient rider in this race right now. Being very methodical. It's amazing these guys are battling this close. Keith Curtis working his way down one of the steepest downhills on the property. And it's wet and it's slippery and it's got roots inside. Really tough, but Keith Curtis makes it look super easy. This course is relentless and you're gonna have to play it smart and ride smooth as you can to get through the day. After the course works its way up and down these big rocky hollers back there, it comes around into this valley called Dark Hollow. Here in the end of his first lap, Pat Smalley looks to have found a second win. He's pushing hard, he looks good on the bike, and I reckon he'll lay it down pretty good. Pat Smaji comes into the pits currently in fifth. A short respite, these pit stops are a crucial refresh during this long of a race. Tristan Hart has been dominating this entire race and season. At this point, he's lapped the vast majority of the other competitors. He's well on his way to his, the final round win. After three hours, everyone's tired that last hour. I don't care if you can run a marathon in two hours or not, you're going to be tired. Riding these dirt bikes is not easy. It definitely taxes the body, so it really just comes down to who wants it the most, I think. Tristan is on a mission to finish his second lap. With such a challenging race, the riders will only be completing two laps today. Tristan Hart working his way through the rest of the climb out of Dark Hollow. He is well on his way to winning every race this season and proving why he is the champion. Chris is not okay with just beating all the competitors. He wants to smoke the media guy too, and I guess I don't blame him. Tristan, he's an animal. It's no quit for that guy.
Logan Volk, who really coming on strong in the latter half of this race. Logan has moved from fourth to second. As they came down terminal descent, they were battling for that second position, and it looks like riders made the move through Dark Hollow. Logan Ballview, persistent as any of them. Third place, running strong, ready to go. Christian Hart, working his way through the last few corners here of the final round of the UF Hard Girl Series, proving why he's the champion, winning every single race. He's the man, Christian Hart. Tristan Hart yet again finishes first with a massive lead, undefeated all season. Dude, crazy stuff. Savage. Nice work. They call Tristan the robot because of his work ethic. His just whole thought process and race craft is insane. He's an animal. This marks his win of the East Coast and Series Championships. Day was a bit of a looser day, I'd say, where I didn't have a ton of pressure and I was kind of just having fun. So that was kind of cool to win this race and go out kind of having fun, I would say. Heads up, Junior. You're on GoPro. He's on bloody GoPro. Heads up, coming up. Some of the best moments are when you're pushed to the absolute brink of death sometimes it feels like and then when you're victorious on um, such a close to death feeling that that's the best feeling ever. Ryder gave it everything he had to fight back from third, fending off Logan Ballapu to secure a second place win. It's definitely easier to say that you can beat someone than it is to beat them, but I think once you do beat them, you'll just click in your head and you'll be like, oh, I can do that again. This year it's been tough because I've been by myself so much. I've definitely missed Cody a lot. When we ride together, I know I'm a pain in his ass and he's a pain in my ass, but I know next year Cody's gonna come back and he's getting older too, so he's gonna wanna go out winning, I think. So I'm gonna have to step it up next year because I know Cody will. Logan Ballapu finishes 30 seconds behind Ryder, earning his first podium spot of the season. A big accomplishment for this privateer. The guy that won every race that he entered here in the U.S. Hard Girl Series this year, the robot, Christian Hart. Being a privateer, it feels good, you know, getting on the podium for the first time. It was definitely a goal of mine all season. I was actually giving him a pep talk before the race saying he needs to get on the podium, and I mean, he almost got second, so that's pretty cool for a guy that's got a 9-5. to five. So massive props to Logan. I couldn't be happier. That's what I was fighting for all day, so coming out on the box definitely, definitely makes me happy. This gnarly race only produced five finishers. I just knew that if I wanted to win the day, I was going to have to dig deep, and that's what it took. You know, the hot weather out here, the gnarly rocks, you just, the winner was going to have to dig deep. Shelby Turner is today's pro women's winner also securing the East Coast Regional Championship.